What's up? Welcome to my own personal hot springs. We are here in Iceland. We're here for the Rift gravel race. But we're making it a full cultural experience. We're here for five days. The Rift is Saturday. A 200 kilometer race all around Mount Hekla. An active volcano, which is certainly an adventure. We've got tons of great friends in town. We got an awesome day in store for the race itself. Rain, wind, probably hail, some glaciers in the distance. It is going to be awesome, but we're going to make it a full adventure here in Iceland. From hot springs to cuisine, this trip's going to have it all. Oh my god. Really rip up. It's getting legit. Shallow. We're probably 25K into the race. The course goes a north lollipop stick and then a counterclockwise lollipop and then back along the stick. We are currently on that stick where we've just had a thrice river crossing the sinuous nature of it we saw it three times the uh toyota snow monster made it through no problem which was really nice which is uh fortuitous that tomorrow i think we're gonna make it through we're gonna get some rain tomorrow so this river crossing may may increase in depth and height and now let's take a quick look at gravel conditions i'm told that there is every type of gravel out here first 9k are going to be paved road and then we get out here to this sweet volcanic rock look at that beautiful porous nature being from New England I don't know this rock very well I'm just gonna guess this is from a volcano this is not from a volcano then under that you got that volcanic soil really rich dark goodness what does it smell like <laughs> tastes like grit Hmm, that's actually kind of tasty. It tastes a little salty. Um, I mean, you literally got everything. Look at the size of this thing. That's like, that's the size of an enormous grapefruit. You got to contend with that as much as you're going to contend with these little, little pebbles. Uh, yeah. Pro tip, don't eat the dirt. gathering invitation for all out of town guests what I like about these events is they're kind of like weddings so the first night everybody's in town you all go to the bar you see who's in town catch up see be seen high five all the good catching up so we're going down the road to the lava establishment that's the name of the place uh, yeah just see who's in town supposedly a dinner we hope to have some um, cultural experience with the tasty foods of Iceland. There may or may not be fermented shark on the menu. Uh. I love Europe because I haven't had to sign a single waiver. Here I have an axe. What's the trick? Oh, I should do more. 
early morning jump in the hot tub. The ever valuable mini travel pump. Funny balance of not tearing your tire open to running fast to that's all. Oh yeah, that's nice. That feels perfect. Let's do it. No kidding. Rolling to the start. Feel great. Beautiful morning. Probably gonna get a little damp here and there. But all in all, slept well. Body has no idea what time it is. Went to bed at 9 p.m., which is like going to bed at 5 p.m. No, I went to bed at 10, which is like 6. Woke up at 5, which is like 1 a.m. Haven't had time to acclimatize, but with enough coffee, feel pretty good. 200 kilometers, 123 miles. Anyone's guess, since I don't know a lot of people who are here, Colin is obviously someone who oh, I think I'll be riding with a lot today. Oh. Good dude, fun guy. I always like mushroom jokes. He's a fun guy. Um, I think it's gonna be a race of attrition. I think uh, whether it is, you know, the length, that's gonna be a six or seven hour day, so that's lengthy. And the course definitely has some sharp stones. So whether you're, whether you're dropping back because of not feeling it or under fueled for the distance or uh, poor equipment choice or just bad luck, I think that's gonna play a role throughout the day. So, all in all, I think I will be patient, take in my surroundings, see who our, my competition is earlier in the race, and then maybe halfway through, start to think about what the move is gonna be, and hopefully initiate it or be in it. I don't know what I'm gonna see. I mean, shoot, we saw a quarter of the course, not even yesterday, and it was beautiful, and that was like, the pedestrian part of the course. We're going way deep into the wilds. So I think this is gonna be awesome. Looking at photos of the of the geography and topography in the area is just something that that is unworldly. Twenty kilometers in, we hit the first river crossing. I think it was the first river crossing that a lot of people saw throughout the weekend. We had scouted it, which was handy. That tore the race up. Ten quickly becomes six, becomes five, and then becomes four. We're still communicating. We realize that we have 100 miles to go, 90 miles to go. I mean, really hard driving pace, pretty unrelenting. It's stair stepping perpetually amid the most spectacular terrain I've ever seen. Among this group, the four of us in the breakaway, that was the perfect collection of riders to have the right feeling for a gravel race. To be able to say, hey guys, I gotta refill my bottle. I need something to eat. I gotta take a pee. I gotta gas up my tire. This was the best part of gravel so that we could communicate and have a good time and, and you know, basically let the strongest survive at the end. Probably 20, 30 miles to go, Christian Meyer suffers a flat when the race begins to get a little bit heated. Next is the three of us, knowing that we're, we're all on the podium and now we're fighting for that top spot. After Ingvar had taken a pull, Colin, boom, came flying by me on the right. I see him go. I jump to get on his wheel and I'm, I am astonished how much power he's got. It takes a considerable effort for me to catch up into his draft. Meanwhile, Ingvar is slowly drifting back. I get in Colin's draft, we're dodging puddles left and right. It may look nice and smooth there, that is some of the roughest terrain that I've ever ridden throughout the day, right there. Colin is driving, I go in the front, I take a pull, 
go through the river crossing after Colin had just taken a pull and boom, I'm in the front again. Go through the final river crossing and I feel my front wheel slip out and I see Colin take off up a final drag. I get out of the river, I start going and Colin's got an extra gear. And I see him slowly go away and I think, all right, dig Ted, dig Ted, dig Ted. And he's slowly riding away. And he's looking over his shoulder and I'm looking over my shoulder and I still catch him. I'm doing the counting thing. I see him at three seconds. He goes to four seconds to five seconds. I look over my shoulder, I see Yingbar. He's at 10 seconds. And we basically keep that same proportion all the way to the finish. Rift was sweet. I mean, it was a small event this first year. A handful, 100 people, 350 maybe. Largely coming from overseas, whether it's North America or Europe. They did a terrific job this first year, just, just really having a great feeling of camaraderie and of fun and of, of, of celebrating coming to such a cool spot. That, you know, I, I see nothing but, but success for the Rift 2020 and beyond. Sad to be leaving Iceland. Uh, I'll be sad when I'm stepping on the airplane. This has been a trip, not to end all trips, but this has been one of a kind for sure. The bike is a very cool way to explore this world. And if it weren't for this Rift Iceland, I would never have come to Iceland.